I, I'm really glad last, last week got a whole heap of, of traction. We had a lot of people asking some really good questions and a couple of people with some um, confused answers. I think it's probably the safest way to do it. Um, I start the videos with a big scrolling disclaimer at the front saying this is entertainment. It's entertainment with intent. Yep. Mm. Um, we, we certainly, we're, we're certainly trying to share with, with our audience some of the information because look, this is potentially a minefield. Every single guy in every pub in Bali has got a, a different reason or a different way of doing what you guys do full time. Yep. So the information shared here is relevant as of today um, and, and anything that you might have done five years ago, 10 years ago is, is no longer the same system as what we're working under now. So please take this as, as an informal, informative but not legally directed at you because everyone's circumstances are different. That's the one thing about, about any legal or any, any sort of, uh, th that's why you get a consultant because you guys know the ins and outs. A simple email um, to us or a simple phone call. Yep. We marry we start up the process. We know exactly. And that, that differs from Betty to Bob to Harry. Yep. And we can go ahead and with it. So many people are, are, are ask questions that are relevant to what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's great. The best thing I can do is I'm going to put their, their email address up here. And Frank and Monica um, have made a career or made, made a, a, a long term business out of helping people to come over here and safely conduct business or safely move here, stay here, help them out with various various things that you need, especially from Australia, but, but a lot, uh, one person asked, do, do you handle people from Europe and other? Of course, mm -hmm. um, they handle anyone that <laughs> wants to come. Um, and it's not necessarily the cheapest way to do it, but it's, but it's the safest and the most sure-footed way of making sure you don't a lose a lot of money b get knocked back for some stupid thing that you weren't aware of that someone else that knows better could have could have sort of guided you around um so again welcome thank you thank you um and thanks for being a part of the show this is getting quite popular so every weekend now we're starting to do a bit get quite a bit of a bit of traction i think it was interesting feedback we got from one guy last week and he had realized and comparing back to Australia, yep. and you know, and the, the due diligence that we maintain and we do all the time, and you know, he said to me, "Geez," he said, "You know, I would have already done that, and I want to do it, and I thought, no, I don't need it here." But after we discussed it, he was very much said, "You do it, make sure it's right before we go forward." Yeah. And uh, and the cost that we compared with, he got a comparison. It was like two and a half, three thousand for a lawyer yeah. in Australia. So you know, it is. It's not cheapest, but that's the first step of anything. Look, I, I came in here, um, this is my own story. I didn't know uh, Frank and Monica when I first got here. Um, and I had a, I had a visa agency. Um, and, and the first six to 12 months, they were great. Every couple of months I had to go and reapply for my visa and send the passport off. And it was a bit of a pain, but they made it nice and easy. Now they weren't cheap either. Great company, but my account manager moved on to another branch or to, to somewhere else. And the person who took over my case didn't understand who I was, didn't have that, that chain of command. Now, because I had such a good service, I, um, I just relied on them to tell me what I needed to do and, and when I needed to renew it. And they'd say, okay, we've got a uh, nippy coming up, so you better get your application in now because otherwise it's going to go over time. And I nearly got kicked out of the country just before my wedding because my paperwork was was in on time, only just because I looked at them and holy shit, we've got a, a, a long weekend coming up in, in, in next week. Is that going to be time for me to get that in, get and and get all? So it nearly screwed my whole wedding up. So um, the one thing I'll say about having a, 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 a let's shall we say a boutique firm looking after it, is is you guys personally handle every single client, yeah. and and there's that chain of command, and and the peace of mind is absolutely worth. The, the few dollars that it costs to make sure it There's happens two properly. That we find that we, we, we must do. One is we've, become, we've got to become, like you said, your diary. We've got to ring you in 10 months' time and say, Maza, we're ready to go. Oh, shit, is it that time? Yes, yep. we're ready to go. So it's up to us to remind because we're all bad in time. Okay? <laughs> we all are. And especially <laughs> yeah, when we're you're retired. And, <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I'm off fishing on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> do I have to do it now? Yeah. Yes, and you do. And the other thing that Monica and I have decided in our business that we don't use Gojeks to 
initiate or pick up passports. We want to meet the person. We want them to say, there's Frank, there's, there's Monica, and I will either go to them or they come to us. And we actually had a guy during the week, you'd laugh at this because I'd spoken to him through a, 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 um, a restaurant and when Monica actually went down, he said, tell me, is there truly a Frank or is he just a fabric? Because <laughs> he says, I, I, never, I never seen him. So I thought, well, that's fair you know. So uh, we, we want to meet people and we're finding that we get a lot better result. The person walks in the door, okay, you are your skin, yeah. you've got to- you build a Paul. Yeah, more than that. And look, let's be honest, there are so many dodgy sites on Facebook or, or, or on YouTube or um, just Everywhere. advertising yeah. place uh, uh, firms that will help you do this. So knowing that you've got a firm of repute, knowing you've got, to be honest, an Aussie just to talk to in my language, mm. because I found a, a communication a little bit more disjointed with the other firm. And I'm obviously not with them now because I've got something better. But, um, Who are you with now? Uh, <laughs> you better remind. Oh, they, uh, we've got him out. We've got him out. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, and you're right here in the middle of Legian. Yes. Um, as I said, on the waterfront, there's a beautiful yeah, little. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a creek river just yeah, at the yeah. side. For those from Melbourne, it's the Yarra. Yeah. So you know it's it's there's an awesome coffee shop next door yeah. who supplies me yeah. with the best coffee. It's not as good as the Budiata Brothers. We we um, set up the the guys in the wheelchairs oh, you? Yes. with yeah. uh, with a coffee maker the other day. So Lovely. their official open was yesterday, mm -hmm. and now the best coffee in Bali is up there. But the second best is here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, look, so we've got a whole heap of ongoing immigration things and one thing i will say is a lot of people saying what about the pension can you get the pension this and this we're we're not based over there and i don't know the idiosyncrasies of the australian system or your particular type of pension whether it's a widow's pension whether it's a veterans affairs i i did realize that the the majority i think of the expats that live here from in my opinion uh, or from my uh, recollection uh, seem to be ex uh, uh, ex Vietnam vets or ex um, oh, return yeah. services because if they've like my mate Al if the, if they're on the Veterans Affairs pension that that is anywhere around the country or yeah. anywhere around the world as, as I know it most um, pensions can be paid in to either an Australian bank account and people can draw out of it and bring it up here yeah. or some cases uh, like the government ones they can actually get it sent to a bank account here in Indonesia but do they have to spend six months of the year in back in Australia or is there any check check with your authorities Absolutely. honestly yes. because yes. that that's going to change and I'm not over they there listening the yeah. Yeah. so that's the best advice I give you if you're not sure check with your own social security or the, the own social network over there and find out what what you need what requirements to withdraw your super or to to live off that most retirees I think it'd be semi self-funded um, sure. but it's not it's not that expensive to live here compared to but there's some, there's some big holes, there's some big warnings that we want to make sure that you guys don't fall that, into. That's one of the ones that we want to probably digress and have today because yeah. what we found out of last week and the week before, that not only is that uh, situation with visas and so forth, but part of our role here is in the consultancy is also to help people uh, bring lease agreements uh, check them out, due diligence, you know, my favourite word, uh, you know, to check it out and make sure it's right. So Monica's going to have a bit of a talk with, uh, about what we can do to help and some of the steps people should do in regarding when they're out there looking at a villa and the heart wants it, but they've got to, the brain has to take over and make that decision and slow it down and look at it comfortably. I've heard more horror stories about that than any other part of people moving to Bali. Mm. The, the visas can be dealt with in, in different ways. The, the horror stories I've heard about people putting huge money down and, and losing it or yeah. risking it yeah. um, with someone who, who doesn't even have the right to sign a contract yeah. on behalf of that property. So, so uh, over to you. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, your turn. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to shut up and drink coffee. Yes, go for it. Okay, so. Did you hear that, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to shut up and drink coffee. All right, we've made it, Well, maybe. <laughs> We got many inquiries about how to do in leasing a property in Indonesia, which is now case is Bali. So things that we're going to send you a list, we call it shopping list or Frank called it shopping list as a seven items like we already talked as well uh, last week. One of it is a copy of the land certificate. So either you're dealing it with direct with the land owner 
or agent property make sure you get your copy of your land certificate and then that's to make sure that you give it to your consultant or um, the person that you trust the to checking on it is it clean land certificate and then the id card of the landlord is it same as the one on the title if it's not they could be the family members but we have to get all the list like if the or uh, the um, id card that presented to you is the son so where's the father or oh, father passed away so there is a list that okay here's a, a letter of the Hayes. so make sure that this person are truly the Hayes and that the person are truly get signed the paperwork later on if you further uh, process for the list agreement right. like that and, and this this uh, little list that we've got together of uh, seven items um, i can tell you that if a person's selling their property whether it be an indonesian or it be a westerner mm -hmm. They can give you all that in five days. If they can't, I tell you, we walk away from it because it, it is just unbelievable how many don't know where their items are Correct. and they come up with the best excuses of the lot. Yeah. Um, and so again, on top of this sits this um, due diligence that uh, we will do for you and, and check it out. But it's a very simple, it makes it easy for Westerners. It's in Bahasa and English. They, they can pass it on. They don't have to think about it. It's just a list of documents that they get for us. And then we can uh, say yes or no. So I guess I just want to quickly preface a little bit. When people are coming here to live here or to retire here, it's very common in Bali for property to be leased over a very long period of time, sometimes 20 to 50 years. Um, that means that the original Balinese person or the original family that owns that land retains that as part of their inheritance and they move on to their yes. children. In Australia, a lease more than 12 or 18 months is probably you yeah. know, a long lease. But, but over here, um, people will lease a, a piece of land. Someone else might buy the, or rent that land for 50 years, yes. build a, a hotel, build a villa, build whatever and then they might rent it out to you for five years, ten years, or, or three months at a time. So, so this, the, the way they do the land and the, and, the, and the leases over here leads to a, a potential situation where I might have a piece of land, I, I lease it to you for the next 50 years, you build a property on it, a, a house or a, a, six villas or something, and then you sublease those villas to her, so if, if after 15 years of owning your villa, you've still got five years left, left on the lease and you think, um, I want to move back into somewhere else or I want to go back home to Australia or something like that. There's, there's, so, many, there's so many steps in the chain okay. that, that knowing who's got the right to sign a visa, uh, sorry, sorry, sign a, a, a lease yeah. mm, it is, is not easy. It's sometimes almost <laughs> impossible to find. If someone's got a lien on the property and they haven't paid their bills and there's so many right. things yes. where where it could get much more complicated and and the lodging of titles and deeds in this country is different to what we have oh, in yeah. australia yeah, yeah. so i found out through just my wife and, and her family that you would have to go back to her village to find out who's keeping the records in, yes. in in Sumatra or in yeah. uh, some, some we, remote area. We call it the chain, the link of ownership of the chain. Yep. And you go back to where you can say there is a clean title yep. and then you make sure that um, the people who have signed it uh, are the true owners. Yeah. And look, uh, must there be some that we've had to give bad news to that the actual title that they've got they haven't got the right to pass the on. Yeah. And we say, we're not interested. I'm telling the client, we're not touching this yeah. because this person had no right to sign it. And we mentioned, I think a couple of weeks ago, but my mate Daz was about to put $200,000 into a bank account because he was here for 10 years. He wanted a long-term mm -hmm. lease yeah. and it was 20 grand a year. And at the, at the time he was paying more than double that for the house he was in. And he found a great place. It was a beautiful uh, opportunity. So he jumped in there. At the last minute, he called only you yeah. and said, am I good to go? And at the very, very last minute, found out that the guy who was signing the lease didn't actually uphold his contract yeah. to the previous guy. And Dazza was about to put $200,000 uh, yeah. Australian dollars into a bank account of someone who could have just said bye-bye and, and exactly. never got it back. And it was overseas yes. too. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so it's critical because of this complicated back structure. Mm. It's critical, especially for people who are retiring. Most you're not going to get a, a long-term lease that's cheap unless you pay up front, or unless you pay a considerable amount of money up front. Yeah, you can you can you can break. You can, can do term, 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 term payments, payments. Yeah. but, but again, generally you're still paying mm. 
20, 40, 50,000 or something. And see, that's another thing that people don't understand. They show us a contract and the guy says, yes, I've got ownership of that. But he's only paid <laughs> five he, years. He hasn't yeah. paid his and he's so, got to... Exactly. Yeah. He's trying right. to get the yeah. money yeah. from our client to yeah. pay for the rest. Yeah. And we're going, no, you've only got five years. You haven't got yeah. 25. And, and so and therefore, again, we've got to protect our client. And so you may absolutely. take it for five, but you're not taking it for 20. So, yeah. okay, just a, a question about it. If during the terms of the contract, one of the parties dies mm -hmm. over That's the next the 20 years, it's a pretty good likelihood. Um, one of the parties, anyone in that yeah. chain, yeah. does the contracts protect you yes. within yes. that chain? That's Goes why it's going to gonna, uh, written in a lease agreement as right. well. So that's already stated in the article okay. of the notary. That's why we need you to have the notarized legal paperwork for your lease agreement because in the article it was stated either one of the party uh, pass away, it goes to the haze. Right. So, so it's continuation. That's right, it never goes. Can, can they sell that from under you and, no, and then kick no, you out? No, they can't. No. No. Tenant in sitting, you call, they call it tenant in sitting, and then the strongest point of them. And so therefore, there is no way in which um, dad dies, the heirs come in, they cannot sell that whatsoever. Right. Uh, it goes right through to its nth degree. Right. So uh, people are protected, and that's one of the reasons we hear a lot here in Bali that, oh, look, it's okay, I'll do an underhand agreement. Now, underhand here is, I'm going to give Muzzer a bit of paper, I cross a stamp, and we will walk away. Look, you might as well throw it out in the street. That's why, you know, we maintain that we would like our clients to go notarised because then it's registered, yeah. it's covered for all po points of any challenge later on. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's going to cost a little bit more, but it, it's a valuable asset. Oh, yeah. but, you're, but you're, you're putting your money up front. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, you're, and you're sinking your time. So within these leases, there's it'll spell out who's responsible for maintenance and who's responsible yes. for yes. Uh, council taxes or fees yeah, or any other right. charges. Yeah, pump pumps, yeah, you know, yeah. simple little things, yeah. you know, and the thing that you have to understand, of course, which you do now as well, is that once you take a place here, you're responsible for the whole lot. Roof <laughs> leaks tomorrow, yeah. that's your problem, okay? <laughs> so again, our role is to say, well, okay, do we get the roof checked? Do we get something else checked before we go in? Because once you're in there, unless it's within the lease agreement that there's a pool pump or something else, especially to going back to the landlord or going back to the tenant, you're, you are 100% accountable for it. And the other thing which we've found just recently is inventory. You know, yeah. people take on a furnished place. We had a, a case of one of your clients, you know, they leased the place and they were all of a sudden, the tenant of two went two ago comes in and says, well, I'll have my furniture. And they went, well, why? It's mine. And no, 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 have a look under the lease. There it was. He owned the furniture. Yeah. So it was actually the guy wow. selling an unfurnished property. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, these are the little And, and so general upkeep, if, if I've got a 10-year lease or something and the fridge dies and the fridge was in inventory, is it, that, is it the owner's responsibility to replace it? No. It's yours. So it's more, again, it's yours, but yeah. then I've got unless, to leave a new fridge for him. Yes, but unless we put it in there, in the inventory, and you've hit right. a very good point, in the inventory, we list down all the items and then we say who's accountable for it. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. so anything with a motor, we push back to the landlord right. all the time. Now, sometimes we're not successful. They say, no, you're not going to do everything, but we'll go for But that's where the negotiation exactly. goes and stuff. Yes. But anything with a motor, push back to the landlord because they've had it, you don't know the age, how old it may be. I know in Daz's case, there was a few items in the house that he didn't want. Yes. So the first thing he said to the owner is, do you want this oh, yeah. or do you want me to get rid of it? Yeah. And, and so that way he was able to, even though it was, it was all written down. It's clear of yeah. the inventory yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of what was there. And that, that's why that you know we, we've gone this simple way that we, we showed people before where we had the shopping list. With, that, with the shopping list, it just makes it easy. We can get it to you by email. You've got it. You give it to uh, whoever you're buying it from. Yeah. And you, you can just be very pedantic and say, there's seven items there. I want seven back. I don't want five. Yeah. I don't want two. I want yeah. seven. If you can't give me seven, I'm finished. I walk yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. And there's usually a reason why they can't give it to you. Oh, that's because right. Because they're, they're, they're trying to hide the fact that maybe, <laughs> yeah. no, don't yeah. worry about Uncle Bob. <laughs> and, right. and there can True. be disputes for over, over and, uh, heirs or rights or whatever. Um, not, not if we write it up. There's disputes beforehand. Yeah, before that's what I mean, yeah. But no, not over heirs. Because the other thing that we would suggest to every client that we have, once they do a lease agreement, they have an asset. Okay, it costs $300 here, you get a will. And you override the will 
to anything else that you hear in this. So you've got the heirs sitting underneath taking over in regarding the lease agreement. Right. Then underneath that you say, well, okay, my kids and my heirs, this is the way I want it broken up or do I want it sold? Right. So that links it all together. So oh, when you're up in heaven, yeah. they're all doing the right thing and not arguing. I'm not going to be up there. <laughs> I'll be out fishing. <laughs> I'm taking my phone to ring up. <laughs> Just to check. So, well, so that's a good, so that's a, I've never even thought about that, but if I've rented something for the next 30 years and I'm not here in 25, yeah. um, there is actually still a, a value exactly. to My the property yeah, that yeah. we can either sell off or dispose of or return yeah. back to the owner. Which we call yes. here over contracting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. And so you die and all of a sudden V doesn't want to continue, then she takes it and she's got the right to over contract and, and use it accordingly. Yeah. Do, do we have the time today to, to touch on owning property in Bali? Sure. Yeah. Do, because when you say owning, give uh, us well, some. owning as in a, a, an Australian owning a piece of land, buying a piece of land, and building a house and and either living in it or leasing it out okay. or something. So else. what we're taking is uh, right of use. You, you can do that. Yeah, no. you, know that. Uh, you mean right of use or right of ownership? Well, I've heard. Yeah. My understanding is there's two ways, or two, two main ways of of being able to buy a piece of land yes. or a house, whatever. Yes. And that's to have a local uh, partner, an Indonesian spouse, mm -hmm. and they buy it, you buy it in their name. Yep. Um, or you you can do it through a, a PTPMA, a company. PTPMA company. Right. Yeah. Which is like a proprietary limited, I guess, yes. in, in Australia. The so so the, uh, you establish a company here in, in Indonesia, mm -hmm. the company buys the land, you're a director in the company, and as long as you're going through the right, the property company structure, and we're gonna, I think we'll go into that in a lot more detail, but people say you can't own land in Bali unless you- There's a third way. Uh, there is a third way. Okay. There's a third way now. Uh, the new regulation now, um, a foreigner can own uh, a land and then put the name on the title, as long as there is two uh, conditions. If it's apartment, uh, the minimum purchase is two, two billion. 200,000. 200,000, 200, that's it, not bad. Yes, and then they, your name can be at the title. Right. But the other thing is you have to have a kitas, not right. only passport. Right. Right. And then secondly, if you want a land or villa on it, the minimum purchase is 5 billion, which is 500,000 AUD. Okay. Yes, then your name on the title. Wow. Yes. So, and uh, for those who want to come over and invest, what, what if you don't want to live here, you just want to invest here, and is that different? In regard to buying it, it? In regard to ownership of the... Of well, you the could buy it and own it, yes. Mm -hmm. you don't, you're not restricted, you're, you're not uh, um, forced to build something on it. Yeah. You, know, you can leave it vacant as long as you But like. you can still build on it. Yes. Um, yes. And, and At a later time. And get a kitas when necessary. Yeah, that's right. Again, ask your questions, <laughs> send them an email. <laughs> but, but it's great because it just sort of... There's a lot of people saying, look, uh, we've all heard the million stories where the, um, the gold diggers have, have sort of got themselves a bullet boyfriend and mm. next minute he's bought a, a, a block of dirt and mm. suddenly they've broken up and she's taken the lot. Yes. Yes. Is there uh, ways? Last week, last, <laughs> last Wednesday, did you, did you want the latest? <laughs> we can give you one. Yeah. So, so there's ways to protect yourself against that? Uh, yes, there is. Yep, yep. my word. Yep. Right. Yep. So it's not just a cut and dry. No, no shit, it's got to be very much yeah. No, all all can be uh, done. Most of the people are taking PMAs and letting the PMA take what they call right of use, and then then taking it that way. Right. Because you're not getting hit with so much tax. Yeah. Uh, there's a very heavy tax on the two billion and the and the five billion. Okay. All right. So that's good news. Um, it, it means that. There's a lot of people that, that if they want to invest or they want to bring some money out to build a house and have a happy ever after, but they don't actually have a local partner or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and the, again, I come back and just revising, even in lease agreements, uh, I want to make sure that people understand, you can walk in the door tomorrow on a VOA and you can lease property, yeah. okay? Is this, for, this uh, phallus about that you must either have a key just or must have something? No, you can start there on a VOA. Not many people do, but you can do that. And they're not linked uh, together, so um, you know, keep in mind that you can start that process. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot of other stuff I want to go go through. Probably next week, we might look at the basics about uh, the time frame. Um, while we're talking about leasing and and or buying or building or something, the time frame that's going to take you to find a property, not the first one you find, but to get a property that you're happy with. Mm -hmm. We we say this every week, but 
it's it's a good couple of months. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a three to six. I think it's a, to do it properly. My ideal recommendation would be come over here for three to six months yeah. on a short term visa. Um, or I'm not advising visa, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, but but come over here on a shorter term yeah. visa for three to six months, settle into an area, find what's around that, that area, yeah. uh, get to know some people, network because networking is the only way that you're going to get the right information and actually to go and see the the physical places. What you see on on these Facebook uh, yeah. uh, villa pages uh, is not always anything like. <laughs> um, so come over here for a few months, get that all together, um, and then get your lease agreement started if you need to, go home, get it all. You could, you, you could, a lot can be done. And, and the other thing that can be done here is that they can come for that three or four months, they see the, the, uh, the uh, um, property that they want. Now let me say that you can sit down, and we've just done one for a gentleman this week. Now uh, we do what we call a letter of, in, a letter of intent to lease. Uh, that's just a big receipt but it lists everything in it. We get that done, everybody's now happy. A small deposit has been paid. Uh, he's now gone back and we will prepare all the documents. So he's back in Australia, we'll prepare all the documents and settlement will take uh, in May sometime. Yeah. So we've taken the time, we've sat back, we've looked at it, we've looked, gone through the process rather than trying to squeeze it into, yeah. oh shit, I'm only here for three weeks, I've got yeah, to do it, don't I've got do to it buy in your, don't, don't do it in a rush. Either don't say it, like if you find like an agency, and then they know you're gonna only three weeks here. Yeah. And then they will try to push him. They will. Yeah, and then yeah. say, oh, we got, we found this, but you have to put deposit as this much amount. We've got money. three other people interested. Right. We need yeah. your money yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So you know, there's not. a million other places, and Frank's out the back. He's yeah. got his money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so, so take your time. As I say right. every week, my wife's two main words to me yeah. are be patient. Yes. Yeah. I'm not a good one, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, be patient, take your time, it, you'll be so much happier and, and you will have wasted a lot less money yeah. to, to just take that extra time and make sure that the move that you're making is a you good know, one. Listen to us or listen to your agent and if they're good, they will, you know, they'll bring the time frame into some perspective. They're all looking after your own interest and sometimes I know people look at my eyes and they go, okay, you're being a proper bastard, you know, I want it done in 10 days. It's not going to happen yeah. and I won't let it happen to you. Yeah. But we will do it in the time frame that you'll be comfortable in, yeah. you won't lose the property, uh, we'll negotiate on your behalf, we'll make sure it's done. And it might be a good time to get some maintenance and stuff done, and some upgrades or a bit of renovation on the property too if you've well, sort it's of negotiation yeah, time. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah. listing in that LOA we list the things that we want done yep. because you're telling us So that'll that give you time to do it and then you come back your villa's Absolutely. ready to go yeah. and and I talk small deposits. We always and you know, you're talking ten thousand um, yeah, ten thousand um, uh, rupee or, yeah, or ten million, 10 sorry. Million. Ten million. 1, you're not talking big stuff. It's a thousand bucks, that's yeah, yeah. that's all. That's uh, not you, massive money. You know, these people have come in and they've said they've put in, you know, fifty fifty million or more. No, don't have to. Not at this stage. So, look. The bottom line is, if you want a if you want a, a cheap place, if you want a place that's that's cost effective over a longer period of time, mm. um, you're not going to be able. To, you're not going to be doing that on a monthly lease. No. Um, they're only going to go for twelve months. Will get you a certain level of, of cost, mm. and then if you go for three to five years, it'll sort of get you in the next bracket, and and beyond five, maybe ten years, you, you're right down at, at base level, yeah. and, and you're getting a property that would otherwise cost probably double that on a short term well, monthly you, you lease. You've made the great suggestion that people come in, and we're doing it now, we're looking at short term for, uh, accommodation, a house, costing five million for the month, yeah. okay? Five million, for, uh, you know, nothing. Stay in the house, don't stay in the hotel, use that as your base, have a look around, extend it by another month if you want to. Yep. You're not spending big money, but you're expanding where you're looking at. Yeah. Then, from there, we're taking the next step of, are we gonna go to 20 years or are we gonna take six? But we're, we're using the small short-term rental or a hostel or a you know, apartments I saw last week, you know, a kitchen, everything included, um, $850 for the month. Yeah. So it, it, you're not spending... There, look, money. there are some places uh, in, um, in Sanur where my mate Al lives, he's only spending less than $1,000 a month mm -hmm. and there's, there's quite a few spare units from time to time because yeah. the downstairs ones are taken up by retirees and the upstairs ones tend to be a little bit more mm -hmm. itinerant. So, so there are places, it's got a beautiful swimming pool, it's a lovely spot and it's under a thousand bucks. And that's only on a monthly, month by month lease. So mm -hmm. you don't have to lock yourself in and there are some places, I am not a real estate agent, I do not own property in Bali. Yeah. I'm hoping to one day, but 
at this point in time, I'm doing this whole series to give you guys some answers to the questions that we're giving. Um, and thank you guys both for, for helping us out today. That's a I think it's been, uh, it's been very informative. Yeah. We're looking at a whole heap of things. Uh, in the future, I want to do how to work in Bali, what the, the process of getting over here, getting a working visa, yeah. and, and the sponsorships and all that sort of stuff that, that are required to make that, that happen. Yeah. Um, there's so many different types of visas that we, we might briefly touch on some of the specialist yeah. ones yes. as well. Yeah. Maybe we'll start next week with just the basics, the, the short term, short to medium term ones and what's required for them and, and, and how do you get this whole process started because I think that's the gateway. Now we've sort of talked about the backside and said, okay, to retire here or just to, to, to get a property here. But to physically have the time and the, and the opportunity to go through that process, mm. you need to, to know how to get here, what's the basic visa, the simplest way. On a visa on arrival, you've only got 30 days and it means everything's going to be rushed. So you can extend that, obviously. Um, the next step is to go through your D D one or the. Yeah, well, the, the main the main thing is you sit down and you have a look at where you want to be. Yeah. If I may use an example, if I if a guy was going to if four four years out, he was going to uh, retire. When he left and walked away from here, he started next week because what he was going to do, fly into Perth. We've got him a hostel here. Yeah. He's coming into the hostel. He's going to use the hostel for three months to look around and get a small home. Because yep. he says then he can fly from Perth to here, save himself three grand every time he's, he's out, of the, uh, out of the mines. Yeah. So he's looked at it as his future, but taken it nice and, nice and steadily. And some of the visas re you required to have a property, a, a, a lease. A lease yeah. so, yes. so, so that's why having this, this early, and I think the best thing I did was come over here for, for six months or so. Mm. I think it was a bit over that. but and then went back and sorted my affairs. I put everything in a shipping container and said, I'll come back and, yep. and, and put your stuff in storage or, or leave a relative staying in your house at home because the last thing you want to do is to sign off on everything. Mm -hmm. That's oh, just lose that one. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you want to do is sign off on, on your house and, and close your life behind, get over here and find it's just not what you yeah. thought it was. So, hey, listen, guys, thank you very much. Take care. I'll bring, I'll bring you around in the camera. <laughs> right. He's cut us off, that's it. Well done, all right. Take care, all. Yeah, thanks. Hey, listen, we're going to do this again next week. Um, and happy Easter, guys, by the way. Happy Easter, yeah. Happy Easter. Yeah. So, we'll, uh, we'll have another talk to them, and thanks for coming along. Cheers. Right. Cheers, bye-bye. <laughs>